Welcome to E901 Probability and Random Process course. In the first lecture, we are going to talk about the course content and objective along with a short introduction to probability theory. So, let us first understand what is probability. In our surroundings every day, we experience many random events where the outcomes are not fully predictable or uncertain. For example, if I ask whether it will rain today or not, we cannot say by a certainty whether it will rain or not. So, how do we analyze such systems? How do we analyze such uncertain scenarios? For example, I would like to know what is the chance that our team score a goal in today's match. So, to answer such question, we take long term averages. We look at the team's performance in the past and based on that, we make a guess about their chance to score a goal today. Such long term averages are interpreted as probabilities. The next would be how do I make decision under this uncertainty? Of course, there would be many outcomes and I may not be able to uh, make a decision which is good for all these outcomes. In this case also, I have to go in an average uh, way. Suppose I want to build a classroom for the incoming batch. I do not know exactly how many students will be there, but I may have some idea. So, based on that, I make a decision so that on the average, the decision is optimal. And of course, there can be some risk constraint. Suppose in a game, you want to increase your average earning, but of course, you want to avoid very large risk. You may not want to take those strategies, which may result in a very huge loss to you. Probability theory deals with the phenomena where outcomes are not fully predictable, but they exhibit some regularity when observed many times. So, these are the phenomena which we are going to focus in this course. We want to look at experiments where outcomes are uncertain, they are not fully predictable, but we know that if those experiments are repeated multiple times, there is some pattern on long time averages. Otherwise, we may not be able to apply probability theory to such phenomena. So, to understand what exactly probability means, how do we interpret this for the physical uh, phenomena, I am going to take a dialogue for uncertainty and probability. So, this is in a hospital, a patient is administered a life saving drug. So, the relative who is taking care of the patient is very eager to know how the drug will work or not. So, he uh, asks the nurse that nurse what is the probability that the drug will work. So, the nurse casually answers that I hope this should work, uh, we will only know tomorrow. But the relative is really concerned about the probability, he is a mathematician you can assume. So, he again asked what is the probability that it will work, right? he want to understand the exact chance. So, nurse really does not understand his question, See, she just says that uh, each case is different, we have to wait. Uh, now, uh, the relative has to ask the same question differently because he is not getting the answer. So, he asked, suppose there are 100 people who are treated under the similar conditions, how many times would you expect it to work? So, the nurse says, uh, she is annoyed, she really does not know why he is asking such questions. She says, I told you every person is different, for some it works, for some it does not work. Now, he still want to know the answer, so he uh, frames a different question. The relative asks, ok tell me, if you had to bet whether it will work or not, would you bet or not? So, nurse says probably uh, I would bet it would work uh, and she is happy because she thought she understood the question, but that is not the complete answer. It works, but he wants to understand the exact chance. So, he again asks a different question, would you be willing to lose 2 dollars if it does not work and gain 1 dollar if it does? This question kinds of tell that if you are willing to bet uh, a large amount of money, you probably have a high uh, confidence on the interval. The now, nurse is very confused, she is like why are you betting on someone's life? So, she says what a sick thought, you are wasting my time. So, this kind of uh, phenomena, kind, this kind of dialogue tells you, uh, give you some idea about what probability is and how different people may interpret. So, the relative tries to ask very different question to the nurse every time uh, to in the hope that uh, he gets the answer he wants. 
So, in this uh, in the few next slides I am also going to talk about these three interpretations of probability which uh, a common person generally understands. In the first interpretation which is known as classical interpretation we are going to define uh, the probability in the following way. For any random experiment we first find the collection of atomic and or equiprobable outcomes. This means if a uh, uh, experiment has multiple outcomes we try to find those outcomes or collect the outcomes in a way that each set of the outcome is equally probable. Now, the probability of any event is equal to the ratio of number of outcomes in, in the favor of this divided by the number of total outcomes. So, let us take an example uh, for this. So, we roll a dice and we want to ask what is the probability to get a even number. So, this dice has 6 faces you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 and all of these outcomes are equally probable. So, our question is what is the probability to get an even number? So, these are the 6 outcomes you can see and what are the outcomes in this which are favorable to our uh, uh, condition. We want to get a even number. So, 2, 4 and 6 these 3 are uh, favorable outcomes. So, the probability would be 3 by 6 because 3 is the number of favorable outcomes, 6 is the total number of outcomes, the probability is a ratio of that. So, this is generally the, uh, the way probability is classically interpreted. You find outcomes which are equally probable and then each event is of course, it is equally probable. So, the ratio would be just 1 divided by the total number of outcomes. Of course, this interpretation has many limitations. For example, you may not always find uh, uh, events uh, with their equally probable outcomes. For example, if I ask whether it would rain or not, they had only 2 outcomes whether it rains or not, they may not be equally probable. So, how can we go about this thing? The other interpretation which people take is known as frequentism interpretation. In this, they do this experiment multiple times and then they ask how many times the favorable event occurs and this frequency right the the ratio of the number of times the favorable event occurs divided by the total number of times the experiment is done is is termed as probability for example we can see suppose we toss a coin many times and we count the number of heads out of 25 tosses suppose 12 times i got a head this means the probability of getting a head would be 12 by 25 so this is the way normally the uh, probability is interpreted the limitation would be that uh, there may be cases where the experiment which you may not be able to repeat. For example, if I ask uh, what is the uh, outcome of the today's match, you may not be able to repeat the today's match multiple times. So, there is some difficulty in those cases, how do I interpret uh, the frequentism interpretation in those uh, cases. So, the third interpretation I am going to take is known as subjective belief. Sometimes we may have some opinion or belief for the random experiments. For example, if I ask who will win today, today's match, we may not have seen the outcome or we cannot repeat the outcome, but based on our past experience or sometime by gut feeling, we have an opinion about who will win the match today or at least some chances about the winning team. The another example would be if we are asked what is the probability that sun will rise tomorrow? From since our birth we have seen the sun come every day. So, if you ask me I would say the sun will come tomorrow with 100 percent probability, but there is actually no way to compute it. It is just our opinion or belief that based on our past experience sun will also rise tomorrow. Sometimes this belief is measured on how much amount we can bet higher the amount higher will be our confidence for that particular outcome. So, now I am going to talk a little bit about history of probability theory which will help us understand how different interpretations of probability theory has come into picture and what is the modern outlook on this probability which we are going to take in this course. So, in the past the game of chances is very popular game of chance is a kind of game which depends on mostly on the just luck right. You throw a dice and if you get a 1 uh, you win. So, such kind of games uh, are game of chances and people uh, have been interested in knowing what how to win such games right. Today even casinos 
there is uh, many of such games and there is lot of people who bet on that. So, it is a very popular interest uh, about understanding and analyzing such games so that to increase the winning chances of uh, them. So, this is uh, how the probability theory actually starts people wanted to understand these games and that is how they came up with the whole probability theory. The first person uh, who gave a systematic treatment is Cardano in 16th century. He uh, had a uh, gambling interest and he uh, his main goal was to understand these uh, uh, games of chances. So, he gave a first systematic treatment of probability theory to understand this uh, game of chances. Then there was a very famous correspondence between Pascal and Fermi and where they want to understand how uh, do we divide the stakes in case the game is not completed. This kind of correspondence was published later on and which was one of the first foundation of probability theory. Next there was first book on probability by Huggins and in 18th to 19th century there were multiple mathematicians who worked on uh, probability theory and the famous one Bernoulli, Laplace and Perso and Gauss. Uh, they have been working on this uh, uh, building a foundation of probability theory, but the first uh, for the modern work on probability theory uh, was done by uh, mathematician Kolmogorov who came up with a definition of probability which was azimatic. This was precise enough to for use in mathematics yet comprehensive enough to be applicable to a wide range of phenomena. So, this uh, is known as the axiomatic uh, theory of probability and this is uh, treated as the modern uh, interpretation of probability which we are going to take in this class. So, how do uh, we apply this probability theory? This will put uh, uh, this course into perspective that why should we do this course and how this course would be useful in our uh, academics or in our research. Suppose we want to uh, take a case, we there is a game where two players are playing A and B are playing uh, and the game is like this, they toss a coin one by one and the player who gets the head first out of the two player wins and I want to understand what is the chance A wins. So, in such questions I will tell you how do we apply probability theory. There are three steps to solve this question, one is observation. There is a uh, the inherent randomness comes from tossing the coin, I need to understand how that experiment works. The way I do it, uh, I do it multiple times and may record uh, the number of heads, right. I may apply my expert's belief or I may have the classical interpretation, right. So, no matter how I do it, that depends on the interpretation, but I would come with the probability of getting a head and getting it. That observation step is done at this point. Next is I need to calculate the probability uh, or the chance A wins. So, I need some series of formulas which I can apply and there is the deduction step comes in. So, deduction step is made from some well uh, known uh, laws or axioms and we apply them one by one to get our answer. And once we have this answer I need to interpret it uh, that is the last step that suppose I get a number how do I interpret it, right. Suppose I get the answer 1 by 3, then what is the meaning of this 1 by 3? Is this the chance that A wins? Again you have to apply different interpretations to understand what probability exactly means. So, first step and the last step mainly depends on uh, your interpretation and we are not going to uh, cover that part uh, in this course. We are mainly focused in the middle part which is how do we deduce different uh, probabilities and here we are going to apply the axiomatic definition of probability uh, and this would be the focus of this course. What is the definition of probability? Uh, what is the axiomatic definition of probability? What are axioms of probability and how do we apply that to get the answer? How we got the probabilities or how we are going to interpret it that is uh, will not be covered a lot in this course. Uh, I would assume that it has already been studied in the undergraduate courses you may have done. So, let us understand how do I apply this in engineering. The most of the real world system you will see 
their outputs are generally random. Okay. For example, let us take a very relevant question uh, example in communication engineering, we want to transmit a message. Right. So, there is a transmitter and there is a receiver, the transmitter transmits a sine wave and it propagates through its air, there is a lot of random factors phenomena going on in this propagation, this may get blocked, this may get scattered and eventually you get a signal which is distorted at the receiver. We hope that this distortion is not significant so that we are still able to understand what was sent. So, if I want to understand the performance of this communication system, my goal would be to know what is the probability that signal is distorted beyond recovery. Right? And to understand that I have to model these uh, uh, random phenomena and then I have to understand how do I compute this probability from our observations. This is where probability theory can be used in engineering applications. To give a broad uh, view, uh, probability theories can be applied in multiple fields. In engineering, it can be uh, applied in communication information theory, signal processing, queuing theory and modeling computer systems, decision and resource allocation under uncertainty and to understand system reliability. In statistics, you may use it to collect and organize data so that you can get useful inferences. You can also use it to predict different outcomes of different games or matches. In physics, probability theory is used everywhere in stats me mechanics, mechanics, quantum mechanics, thermodynamics, most of the field in physics uh, uses probability theory. In computer science and machine learning, randomized algorithm and random search, bioinformatics, machine learning, optimization under noise and prediction, they are all just application of probability. And the last one which is actually the first one, economics and fi finance. Probability theory is used to understand investment, insurance, risk assessment and of course, the first cause which is gambling. Now, I am going to talk about some models which we are going to use in a study of probability theory. One is we need to understand what is random experiment. This is the, uh, as I said earlier, we are interested in experiments where the outcomes are not fully predictable, yet they exhibit some kind of pattern when they are done in the long term. So, these are random experiments. For example, if you throw a dice or you have to choose a number, this number can be anywhere or in some finite interval or suppose uh, there is a raindrop and it falls somewhere on the grass, I want to understand where it falls. So, these kind of random experiments uh, are, would be something which we are interested in to understand uh, the li uh, chances of different outcomes. So, this uh, there may be finite number of possibilities, for example, the dice has only 6 possibilities, a coin toss has 2 possibilities. Choosing a number may have countable number of possibilities because you can choose 0, 1, 2, 3, these are countable numbers or there may be also uncountable number of possibilities. The raindrop can drop into any x, y coordinate of the grass and if you look at all the outcomes, they form uncountable number of possibilities. So, first model we would make is sample space which is nothing but set of all possible outcomes. That is our starting point. We look at the random experiment, collect all possible outcomes which uh, can happen and we make a sample space of it. For example, let us take a coin toss example, there are two outcomes head and tail. So, if I make a set of these two outcomes that will be my sample space. I can also write it uh, as h comma t and we normally denote sample space by the Greek symbol omega. So, omega would be equal to h comma t and we use this set braces to denote the set. Second thing which would be interesting in random variables, these outcomes which we looked in the last slide are physical events or physical phenomena. To quantify them, we want to assign some numbers to each outcome. For example, ye, this coin toss, they were head and tail, I can assign 1 to head and 0 to tail. Now, what is the benefit of this? Assigning a number may lead to a tractability and it is easier in mathematical notation. 
it provides some order to outcomes you can count which outcome is bigger or larger and you can also quantify distribution you will we will talk about what distributions are in the later part of the course but assigning a number does help in understanding the possibilities of different outcome and this assignment can be physical interpretation which can be intuitive or they can be any arbitrary assignment uh, no one is stopping us where would the physical interpretation be used suppose there is a machine which outcomes either 1 or 0 so there are two outcomes 0 and 1 and if i assign numbers 0 and 1 to these outcomes this will be physical interpretation but i can also assign 3 to 1 for getting a 1 outcome and number 2 to getting a 0 outcome that is also fine and that de will depend on our applications now these experiments can be repeated multiple times so if you repeat it one time you get a head or tail and you do it again you get diff different may get a different outcomes and if you do it multiple times you may get uh, different and different outcomes now uh, i can represent these trials by if i represent head and tail by 0 and 1 uh, i can represent this uh, pattern also by a waveform which will be take 0 or 1 accordingly what our assignment is. So, in this case I have assigned 1 to uh, if I get a tail and head is assigned to 0. So, this is the waveform you may get, but this is a discrete waveform it is just a collection of 6 different random variables. The another object we will take in the later part of the course is known as random process. In many cases you will see the outcome do not just correspond to one number, but a complete waveform. So, in this case suppose you have a system and there is a output, uh, if you measure that output every time you measure this you get a very different waveform. So, instead of one number I am getting a waveforms. So, such kind of processes uh, can be denoted by random process can be modeled by random processes. This is a continuous process. So, in time uh, it is a, a continuous waveform and such kind of processes can be used to model noise, random behavior of systems, uh, different engineering applications like packet arrival process, base station location, uh, time series models and speech signals etcetera. So, now I am going to talk about uh, the content of this course, they uh, we will have different modules. Uh, the first module we will talk about introduction to probability and what is probability space. In the second module, I am going to introduce what are random variables, give a formal definition to them, and there are two types of random variable continuous and discrete. We will take a note on both of them. To characterize this random variable, there are different tools available. They are known as CDF and PDF slash PMF. We will see what are they and how do we compute them. In the fourth model, we will talk about expectation of random variable, variance and moment generating function. Moment generating function helps us in characterizing the random variable. Then in the fifth model, we will talk about function of random variable. So, you can apply different functions to random variable and still get some more random variables, how do we characterize them that will be our goal. In the sixth module, where we will going to talk about the random variable transformation. In the seventh module, I am going to uh, take a little bit diversion. I am going to use computer simulation to get uh, to understand this random variable better. So, here we will learn about sampling of random variables and how do we compute the empirical statistics from computer simulations. So, until now we have learnt about the theoretical distributions, here we will actually uh, have some experiments via computer simulation and we will see how do I get results, uh, they, those are empirical results which will match our analytical results. In the eighth one, in uh, eighth module I am going to talk about conditional expectation. In ninth module, I am going to talk about law of large numbers which uh, comes when we take a collection of many random variables and we will learn about what central limit theorem is. In the 10th 
part of this course, we will introduce random processes and we will see some examples. Eleventh module will talk about distribution of random processes and the twelfth module we will see what happened when you pass random processes via linear systems. So, these are the references for uh, this course which are going to follow. Most of the content will be in the class notes. So, if you follow them you will get uh, the complete content of this course. If you also want to study extra, you, there are two reference books which I would recommend. One is uh, by Papalus and Ply, its name is Probability Random Variable and Stochastic Process. Uh, you can look at the fourth edition. And the second book is a online book which is freely available. It is from Bruce Ike, An Exploration of Random Processes for Engineers. The link is uh, given here. Thank you.